Robert Plank Show Episode 229, Temporarily Embarrassed Millionaires, The Self-Fulfilling Prophecy, and Social Policing. Welcome back to The Robert Plank Show. This is the program where we talk about building an online business and making money. And today's episode and today's topics are sort of geared to, there's this weird uh, John Steinbeck quote, I think, about how uh, the poor, especially in America, see themselves as temporarily embarrassed millionaires. And that can kind of be a good thing, right? It means that uh, you're not just going to accept your lot in life. You're not just going to stick to that nine to five employee kind of job. You want something better, but it also holds you back, doesn't it? Because uh, you know, it makes me think back to about a decade ago. I was still living in an apartment. It was before I owned my own home and stuff like that. And my next door uh, neighbors were always, well, first of all, always blasting loud music. They both uh, rode big, huge lifted trucks. They had huge speakers. Whenever they left the door open, there were these huge, gigantic speakers in their apartment. But when they left the door open, I also saw uh, that their kids had sleeping bags in their front room. They had a one-bedroom apartment, and uh, the parents lived in the bedroom. The kids slept in the front room, and yet they could afford these huge trucks, these huge speakers. I always saw like furniture rental places moving their stuff in and out. And every once in a while, I saw some kind of uh, like a warning or an eviction sort of thing put on their front door. And by the way, they were blasting music in the middle of the night. So uh, I don't know what their situation was happening there, but they were for sure trying to keep up appearances and uh, by spending all this money and they were sort of going in the opposite direction of what they were looking for, right? They were looking to fake it till they made it. And instead they were uh, putting themselves into more and more debt just to keep it going. And that's a really scary place to be. And uh, and it's a place that, you know, it's, it's good to get out of. And so it's, these sorts of things sort of uh, go into my mind when I I think about uh, you know when there's this quiet time to reflect and whether you're listening to today's program uh, during the holidays or maybe it's spring break or week under whatever but there, you know there are those times when we need to really uh, kind of pause and reflect and slow down uh, and there's always time to do it uh, and I think that if you find yourself in sort of a, a holiday situation or if you have a few days off or or whatever and you're looking to uh, to maybe not repeat a lot of your mistakes then maybe today's program is for you so I have a bunch of really cool quotes for people uh, uh, to, to share with you, to share with you uh, from all these, you know, really famous thinkers. So one is, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And that's one of the most famous quotes in the world, and it uh, is going to apply so much when we talk about avoiding the thing called the self fulfilling prophecy. What does that mean? It means that if you think this internet marketing thing is not going to work, well then you're right. But if you think that building your own business will work, then you'll find a way. Charles Bukowski says, the problem with the world is that the intelligent people are full of doubts, while the stupid ones are full of confidence. John D. Rockefeller said, don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great. And Pastor Stephen Furtick says, don't compare your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. So I saw this uh, video from Gary Vaynerchuk a few weeks ago where uh, someone was asking him, you know, when is it time to quit? How do I know if I'm going in the right direction? And he asked this, uh, this question, are you losing belief or do you just wish it was happening faster? So think about that. If you're, if you don't believe it's going to work anymore, then that is a problem you need to tackle. Maybe that means you need to adjust your sales to go with the wind or point yourself in a new direction or find a new income stream or whatever. But if it's just a matter of you have your goal, you're on your way to that goal, you've actually made some progress, you've made some sales, you've built a list, you're on your way to wherever it is you want to be. If you just wish that was happening faster, then that is what you need to do, right? That is a situation where you need to have more patience in, in uh, the case of this video I saw, or maybe you need to somehow multiply your efforts or scale or something. But if it's a matter of you're not pointed in the right direction, then that is a different problem to solve. And it's really helpful to sort of break down uh, these bigger problems into smaller, more solvable chunks. Uh, and I mean, what comes to mind with that is uh, like a big thing with all the, you know, Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins kind of self-help stuff. What was really helpful is to decide whatever problem is facing you, is it an inside problem or is it an outside problem? Is it a problem with you you have are having trouble with the way that you're perceiving something or reacting to something or feeling about something, like you have a bad attitude? In that case, fix your bad attitude. Or is it a matter of you need to take different action, but just kind of splitting that problem in two and saying, okay, well, I'm feeling this way or I'm not where I want to be or whatever. Think about those things. First of all, are you losing belief or do you wish it was just happening faster? 
procedure? And then is it an internal or an external problem? And speaking of Tony Robbins, he says that every successful person has a rule to never spend more than 10% of time on a problem, but at least 90% on a solution. So Tony Robbins, uh, don't spend 10% of the, your time on a problem. Think about that solution. Now there's a bunch of uh, little reminders as we get into today's program that uh, you know I was just kind of walking earlier and I thought of some of these different things. So let me just kind of dump these on you, and you know maybe this is the kind of thing you can listen to repeatedly and see what sort of sticks with you uh, throughout the year, or if you, you you know whenever you listen to this, just some something I think will stick. So first of all, people have less of what you have and are happy. Others have exactly what you want, if not more, and are unhappy. So there's that genuine Robert Plank quote right there for you. Now the next thing is being upset or stressed about your business. It's, it's a good thing if you channel it into something positive, growth. So just being upset or being stressed, I mean, that's a problem if it's chronic, if it's all the time, if it's about the same thing, about something that needs to change. But if you're just kind of sort of have that a little bit of panic or a little bit of hunger in general, then use that to say, okay, this is my, my brain telling me that I need to jump in and take some action. You know, you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now in your journey and the present situation and whatever you're in, the present probably came very, very close to not happening as it was supposed to. I know that it was for me. I know that there are decisions I made in the past where, uh, you know, whether it was to quit my job or launch my first product or go to some sort of seminar that changed the course of my life, whatever, there were definitely those decisions where, you know, I might have made that decision eventually, but I might have made it way too late in life or, or maybe a few years later and I would have wasted all that time or I might have uh, done something or made that particular product too soon and then I would have been discouraged at that not panning out. So I think that the present is what it's supposed to be but the future and the future that should happen for you is probably very close to not happening as it should so keep that in mind. Now if things are tough is it possible that you're being set up for something better? Will you tell me? And haven't there been times when you enjoyed taking some kind of action? I mean, um, I was, uh, I take a bunch of walks during the day. I took a, uh, my first walk today. I was walking, and for some reason, my phone keeps doing this thing where uh, when the battery's at like 23% or so, it instantly dies. And I'm not sure if it's an, uh, an update or I need to do an update or whatever, but lately, just the phone has been dying on a walk. And then, you know what's left? Well, I don't have my music or my podcasts to listen to, but I can kind of hear the birds tweeting and just enjoy that quietness, that quiet time. And so uh, sometimes even though technically like walking is work, walking is effort, walking is expending energy, that can be kind of fun. I mean lately I've been having a lot of fun, you know, doing the laundry, doing the dishes, making the bed, just as weird as it sounds, figure out if there's a way for you to enjoy some of these one to two minute tasks of just sort of just enjoying the process, enjoying things happening, enjoying the quietness, there's something to that. If things are difficult, it's because you're being tested. Think about that. If uh, you know, so, if something screws you over, if life screws you over, the internet screws you over, whatever, it's a, the chance to find out what you're really made of, and you can just think of it in terms of well, you're being tested, and this is the period of time, uh, whatever, wherever you find yourself, this is where the weak people are being shaken out, and you're the strong one. You're gonna hang on. You're gonna power through. You're gonna do better because of it. Uh, and this is an opportunity for personal growth. Think about, especially building your business. There's the feast and there's the famine. There's the building up, there's the putting in the time, there's the uh, putting out all those feelers or joint venture things, there's making those products, there's playing around with ads, there's doing a big launch, and then there's the big payoff. And it, it sort of messes with your head, right? Because there's these long periods of time when there, you're building something, there's not a payoff, and then the short periods of time when there's a big payoff for not a lot of effort, and it almost feels unfair, right? It's like, well, why is it that when I cared the most and I put in the most number of effort and I worked the number of hours the most, it wasn't paying off. But then when it suddenly clicked, it was like, okay, well, where where were you, where was the money or where were you when I, back when I was struggling and stuff like that? So, I mean, think about that. It's just kind of, there's those ups and downs in your business and your life is not a straight line. It doesn't go straight up. It doesn't go straight down. It doesn't go in some kind of curve or, or you know, up and down spiral because, you know, what happened in 1970 doesn't really matter anymore, really. And what even happened a few years ago, whether you made a mistake or your business didn't do so well or uh, your launch didn't go as well or whatever happened, I mean, those things a few years ago 
don't really matter. And, and what I found, especially recently, is that life is a series, or at least online business is a series of three to five year containers. Okay, so whatever it is you're doing right now, hurry up and get it done and get it out there and make some money from it because in three years or five years from now, things are going to be drastically different. Just think about how things were before cell phones caught on hugely versus just a few years later, or before Facebook or Wikipedia and just a few years later, or before live streaming and just a few years years later or before webinars and just a few years later so things change so much especially with uh, you building your online business even more so when you're building a business online and doing all these internet marketing things so think of though that it, it, in those terms three to five year containers so whatever you did you know six years ago ten years ago that doesn't matter and that's both good and bad right because if you did great ten years ago that's not a guarantee things are great now. If you screwed up in the past, well, then now I'm hoping that uh, things are on the upswing for you, whatever that means for you, and that uh, you don't let all those past things catch up to you. I mean, I think all the time about uh, things in the past where I could have let it eat away at me. I could have pursued all these things of, you know, grudges and stuff like that, but I've chosen to move on. I've chosen to let go. Sometimes it's a constant process to remind myself to let go, uh, but that is a thing that I, that I can do now. And speaking of grudges, have an abundance mindset instead of a scarcity mindset. You might have heard this kind of uh, kind of spoken about in you know self help and things like that. And what it basically means is that you know the the the, the, the possibilities in front of you are bigger than you think. Uh, everyday life right now is better than it has ever been. Uh, the the ways you have of making money online are more abundant than there ever been. And if you look at the most successful people, they give and they give and they give and they they share all kinds of stuff just like how. How, you know, I'm enjoying sharing uh, what we're talking about today. I enjoy making this podcast. I'm fine sending out emails. I do ask for money and I do do things to build my business, uh, but I'm also fine just revealing all kinds of cool stuff because why would I keep it a secret? Why would I keep it to myself? So have an abundance mindset instead of a scarcity mindset. If that means forgiving such and such person or moving on or cutting a person out of your life or even just fixing your own stuff on the inside, do whatever it takes to sort of see the bigger picture and be more optimistic and don't think that just because you have you earn a hundred dollars online that someone else has to lose a hundred dollars, you can make a training course on how to play the guitar or how to play on eBay and someone gladly pays a hundred bucks for that and they get more out of your one hundred dollar course than a thousand dollars with a music instructor and then they can go on and create their own music and have ten thousand dollars worth of enjoyment. I mean things grow and grow and uh, you know it really irritates them when people kind of kind of just trap themselves into sort of a box. And maybe you might be thinking, you know, what the heck's what bug has crawled up Robert Plank's butt? Like why the heck is he talking about all this stuff? And you know what? Um it's just sort of I'm in this sort of reflective period and you know every now and then we get um, you know, someone writing in and someone just writing in kind of angry and just, you know, talking about uh, their their past mistakes and talking about the courses they bought. And they say, you know, well, I've paid all this money for this product and this other marketer. So what I bought from you, it better be good. And you know what? It's like if you go into any kind of situation thinking, well, this better be good or else then you're really setting yourself up for, for failure. And that's really not a good place to be. And, you know, we've had people – um write in and they you know I probably shouldn't even be saying this but some people will buy like a seven dollar plugin from us and they'll write in like a like a whole page worth of all this stuff that you know all this reasoning and all this stuff about why they want to refund and I just I don't read it first of all because I don't need that negativity I just click the button I just grant them the refund because there's no need to sort of go through all this process there's no need to put yourself through all of this stress and do all this work uh, just because just if, if something's not going to work out, right? If you do want a landing page, go and grab our plugin at papertemplate.com. Grab it, install it. Great, it'll get the job done. If you don't want a landing page, then don't get Paper Template. But you know, you don't have to make it uh, this whole big drawn out process. I'm not going to take it personally if you grab our plugin, which does work. But if you grab it, if you don't set up a landing page. That's fine. That's your decision. If you grab it and you want a refund within the refund period, you don't have to bother sending a big long uh, pages and pages of stuff to try to convince me. I'm happy to see the bigger picture and I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. And so sort of uh, it's important to, to you know think about others and stuff like that, but you don't want to be too far in that direction, right? And here's here's something else. I, I've heard of this term every now and then, but I've never, I don't actually know where it came from. I don't know if it came from like a book or a person, uh, but social policing. 
Okay, social policing sort of works like this. Let's say that you're uh, standing in line to get into like a popular bar or a club or something, and then uh, Tom Cruise's limo pulls up, and Tom Cruise comes out, and he's got sunglasses, and he cuts in line, and he gets right in, and then meanwhile, you're stuck waiting for three hours, and you barely get in at the very end. So you might look at that and say, well, that's unfair. I should go out of my way and, you know, stop that from happening. And, and you know, sure, there's situations in life where maybe you have to butt in, but for the most part, Stay out of other people's business. You don't like someone else getting up into your business, so why would you like someone else doing it? And so it's not up to you to, to save the world, and all you can do is look out for yourself first. Be selfish, and selfish means that, okay, if you need to build that business and sell that product and make that coaching program, make that membership site, make that plugin or that app in order to make money for you and your household and have a better better living and stuff like that, well, then do that. And if you're the kind of person where you say, well, I really want to give back, well, you know what? It's easier to give back if you have money. So look out for yourself first. And this is important. If looking out for yourself for, for looking out for yourself in general can include feeling good about helping others, then that's great. Then that way you'll be congruent. That way you won't have to say one thing and do another or be a liar or have this thing called cognitive dissonance. Uh, you can just say, okay, well, I'm going to be selfish and part of me being selfish is feeling good helping others. So that is what I am going to do. But be careful about that social policing thing, right? If you see other people uh, doing business online or marketing in a certain way, of course, it's okay to get angry about it. It's okay to use it in your marketing, but don't go in sabotaging other people's businesses just because you disagree or because you you want to feel better about yourself. Just be really, really careful about that. And everyone's different, but I think that a lot of people are not quite calibrated to where they need to be. And let me explain. Uh, if you're ever you know feeling stuck or not focused, the best solution for you is called Four Daily Tasks. You can grab the book of that at four daily tasks dot com slash book. You can join our group at four daily tasks dot com slash group. And the thing I noticed with four daily tasks is this is the sort of system where it's very, very simple. It means you do four things a day. One thing is a 15 minute task. The other three tasks are 45 minute tasks. But you sort of have to conform yourself for that system. I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, just wake up whenever you feel like it and just, you know, do your online stuff whenever you feel like it. And, you know, that is a recipe for putting in a lot of hours and not getting a lot of those results. So you need to calibrate yourself a little better uh, to avoid things like burnout, to avoid things like being a workaholic one uh, day and then being a procrastinator the next Four daily tasks keeps you on target, keeps you from doing those important money-making things that move your business forward every single day. And so you have to sort of calibrate yourself and say, you know, in the past, I used to only do one thing a day, or I used to give myself this huge project and I kept chipping away at it and I'd have maybe three or four good days and then a week of bad days and a couple good days of being productive and a week of not being productive. That doesn't sound like fun. What does sound like fun is to get things accomplished, to move forward, and to do those small tasks that keep you making money and keep growing your business and lead you to making even more money and therefore having even more fun. Guess what? If the things you're doing, if you start making money doing those tasks, they will be fun because you have that reward in there. But a lot of people think that they can do 20 things or they don't need to batch things up or that they'll, you know, uh, figure out the system later. Well, don't just sort of recalibrate to four things. It's the most optimal thing that you can do. Just a 15 minute task and three 45 minute tasks. And that will sort of help you. Another great way to, to make yourself self calibrated or, to, or maybe to ask yourself about this is how far into the future and how far into the past do you think? If, you, or if you're always thinking about the heyday or the good old days, maybe that means you're focused too much on the past and not what's happening right now. If you're super duper stressed out about things, then you're thinking too much about the future and it's up to you to realize, well, how far in the future and how far in the past I should, uh, I should be thinking and where my mind should be at. But if you're not in the present enough, uh, that's not good. If you're, if you're find yourself, uh, having problems getting things done, maybe you're too much in the past. Uh, so, so sort of think about that is where are you on that spectrum of 
of stress and procrastination and it might just be because your your brain or your thoughts are thinking too much about the way things used to be or about the way things could be and you have to get that sort of in check to know okay well I need to be happy with where I'm at but also eager to move forward and have the might the right metric by the way so your metric should be something important that that uh, helps you, right? Like making more money or reducing more hours. And a lot of people, I think that, you know, and, and other people's business is their business. I'm just saying in general, but a lot of people I think are just trying to show off just to have the, the coolest screenshot in in Google AdWords or in Shopify or in Amazon and some people are going out of their way to lose money on their business for the purposes of having a really impressive screenshot and then they can sell a course and I don't know hopefully break even or maybe make even more money but be really careful about about revenge especially because I mean revenge is an okay tool because if someone you know said you couldn't do something well then you could prove to yourself that that thing can be done but just be really careful if you know uh, that friend or the family member back in the day told you or laughed at you and said you'll never make money and now that's your driving force because what if you do make money and then you show them and they're still not impressed well then what was all that for I mean it's it's better if the actions you take are to impress you, right? And another trap people fall into is they're not successful, they, their business isn't taken off quite yet or not to the level they want it to be. Someone else makes fun of them and they take steps to be a liar. They make t- steps to keep up appearances and like like that neighbor I had, go further into debt, buy a big lifted truck, buy a, a big, uh, or, you know, buy all this fancy stuff just to what? just to show off not good so be aware of those sort of those hang-ups those pitfalls those excuses you're not too tired to do it if you say you don't have time everyone can carve out time for this if you say people aren't buying right now because it's this month or it's this day of the week I mean people are buying all the time I mean especially you know uh, like you know years ago when there was like the recession and stuff like that well first of all people were buying all kinds of new cars back then so I didn't see that much of a recession but my other thinking was you know if there's ever any kind of economic upset any kind of downturn in the economy doesn't that mean that people are looking for other ways to make money right if if people are losing their jobs left and right for example well doesn't that mean that maybe they're looking even more into building their own business or to you know make money on the internet or isn't this the perfect excuse for a lot of people who've just kind of been living comfortable lives and then now that this unexpected thing happened now this is the push or this is the sign for them to now go do things and so you know any any time that there's any kind of bad event or any kind of excuse there's always some sort of an upside to that excuse right if people if you say well you know there's no point in marketing in in this month or this uh, week because no one's buying and no one else is marketing well great doesn't that mean that there's more room for you to market doesn't that mean less competition doesn't that mean that um you know there's less noise to cut through so there's always an upside and don't tell yourself that you need to wait until blank the time will never be just right and I think back to when I first put out my first information product I was all ready to go I had all these plugins made I had all these uh, things written I had all these downloads ready to go it was ready for me just to push the button and I was gonna price it at I think thirty dollars and then at that time a ninety seven dollar uh, ebook came out and it was I think like the first uh, ever major ebook for a hundred bucks and I thought whoa If $97 is the new $30, don't I have to go back and do triple the stuff? And the answer, of course, was no. The answer, of course, was I was completely ready to go, but then one little thing came across and I was falling into all this doubt and I was looking at what other people were doing and comparing my insides to their outsides and all these other things. And I just, I I stopped for a second and actually I asked uh, some of my, um, some of my, my close marketing friends and I said, you know, should I wait around and do this? And they just they all said no. So sometimes we just need that extra voice to say, don't worry about waiting, just go ahead and do it. Uh, so the excuses of I'm tired, I'm too young, I'm too old, I don't have time, I don't have the experience, people aren't buying now, I need to wait. I mean, that's just it's a, a bunch of crap. Don't fall into uh, those kinds of things. Don't be a downer. 
Don't be a victim. Don't be a person who puts themselves down. Don't be predictable. Don't be one note. Don't be that kind of cardboard character. If everyone knows you as the angry person or the grumpy person or the sad person, I mean, if you were a a movie character or if you were a TV character and you knew exactly what the character was going to do, isn't that just kind of lame? So maybe surprise people. And if you're always Mr. Holding a Grudge, maybe forgive someone and kind of shock them because that's you showing some sort of growth. Don't give up and don't use any old excuse to stop unless you seriously believe it. Okay, so if you really think that, you know, online business isn't for you or if you think that the particular path you found yourself on is not going to work anymore, if you really believe it, okay, change directions, but don't just give up at the first sign of trouble. Don't stop doing something unless you replace it with something else. Super frustrating, right? Uh, we might put in a lot of effort to uh, to make a product, make a sales that are launch something, and the worst thing you can do at that point is to just throw it out because you did all that work for nothing. So um, if, if you're bored or you're tired with your day job, or you're bored or you're tired with uh, whatever kind of marketing you're doing, whatever niche you're doing, don't just drop it and then spend a year figuring it all out. Kind of put in an extra hour or so a day and have this other branch of the tree up and going and then have that going at full blast before you cut loose on something else. Now, I don't want to end on, on a down note, so let's talk about what you should do, at least I think. So do find a way to make it work, even if it seems the universe is conspiring against you, because it's not. I promise that the universe is not conspiring against you. But if you're an an online business entrepreneur, then it is your job to enjoy the struggles and to rise to the occasion. And if you come across a roadblock to, to, to do more to overcome that roadblock, seems simple. But then when it comes down to it, a lot of people really find out what they're made of. And a lot of people realize that they don't have what it takes. But you listening, I think that you do have what it takes. Do decide to let go, to have those important boundaries if you need them, to get those priorities just right, and to find the time for what really matters in life, whatever that means for you. If that means find the time to actually uh, finish that book or grow that online business and not spend forever doing it, that way it's done and you can spend even more time with your family or doing something you love or traveling or whatever, well then great, find the time you do that because you'll never have today again. Do switch gears when you need to. Do recharge your batteries. And if you find a a break in your schedule or if you find yourself coming across, you know, like a new year or a birthday or a a death of someone you know, or if it's if it's just sort of that transition period, then take the time to calm down and reflect and think and walk and just have that quietness and go for a drive and stuff like that. Do something different to break up the usual monotony instead of just going through the motions. Do wish you were better. It's always great to wish that you were better and to not stay in the same place and not become complacent and all that. And your best is enough, but just make sure that it is your best. For a lot of people, a lot of people don't feel good. A lot of people people feel guilty because their best is not their best and they know it. But on, on the other end of the coin, if you're doing all this cool stuff and, uh, and and you know you could be better, you know that you wish you'd found more time or finished more things, if that really is your best, then don't sweat it. And, and there, there's always a chance to do something better, but your best is enough. Just make sure that it is your best and use that past failure and frustration as fuel to do better in the future. So a lot of times we wish that we weren't so stressed and believe me like I do with all kinds of stress that just like kind of comes from the way I am Uh, but if you feel yourself like super duper stressed and you wished it was gone well you probably wouldn't wish it was gone because with the stress comes like that ambition and the drive and the sort of not being somewhat satisfied but not totally satisfied with where things are and you want to do better and so so, I mean, it's okay to feel these things. It's, it's only natural as long as you don't let it take over your life, as long as you don't let it get in the way of things. But just having the, these bad thoughts, I mean, it's part of the ups and downs. Just use it to do better. So, so give some of those things a thought about, you know, some people are temporarily embarrassed millionaires or they see themselves as that and they sort of want to shortcut and jump over the middle class area and they end up poor just because they're so dead set on being rich, if that makes sense. 
person. They don't want to actually build a real business. They, they don't want to let themselves feel happy about making their first $100, $500, or $1,000. They'd rather just lie about it. And I mean, I don't know, like lying just catches up to you in the end, doesn't it? So, uh, so don't be one of those temporarily embarrassed millionaires. Be a person who provides value. Be a person who builds a business. Be a person who gets things done and then has the common sense to look back and reflect and course correct if things don't work out way. And that way you can avoid the self fulfilling prophecy of telling yourself well, it'll never work well then guess what you're right but you tell yourself that uh, there will be obstacles along the way but you'll do your best to uh, to you know drive through them or go around them or do what needs to be done to get your goal and I think that you'll do it wonderfully so I'm Robert Plank from the Robert Plank show thanks for tuning in have a great one and bye now do you run your online business using WordPress did you know that the number one reason why people's WordPress sites get hacked is because of outdated plugins, outdated WordPress, or just flat out not knowing what they have out there? I mean, how many times have you created a test site and just let it sit there? You're leaving yourself at risk. Besides that, you're wasting a ton of time every single time WordPress updates or your plugins update. There's a better way. Check out Website Remote, where you can manage all of your WordPress sites from one simple-to-use dashboard. I'm talking about comparing what's on each site, comparing what versions are out there, and most importantly, choosing what you want to update when you want to update it with one single click. This is the way that you need to be managing all of your WordPress sites. And we have a special just for you for being a listener of The Lance Tomashiro Show. Head on over to WebsiteRemote.com forward slash LTS. That's WebsiteRemote.com forward slash LTS to get your 99 cent trial started today. You're never going to look at managing your WordPress sites the same way again.